Hey everybody, welcome back to Man Bites Film. My name is Lewis, and this episode we are going to be doing a special tribute to one of my favorite uh, actors of all time. And yes, he's a very underrated actor, and I consider him one of my favorites. I love 90% of the films that... No, I take that back. About 70% of the films that he's been in, but he has an amazing catalog. And just some of the ones that are currently streaming on Netflix, which are the ones that I'm going to be reviewing in this episode. The first one is going to be Grand Piano. This is a story about a thief that plans an overly elaborate heist with Elijah Woods as an amazing concert pianist as the centerpiece. In a very interesting, limited storytelling film, Elijah shamed just five years ago is playing his first concert back and forced to play his shamed piece of music by Cusack in a crazy turn of events for an awesome ballet while this concert plays in the background. He and, and John Cusack attempt to outdo each other. The film has amazing pacing throughout the story. I came into this film thinking, all right, it's just going to be a Cusack film. You know, usually his films are five, maybe a six. There's a couple that are phenomenal. But this film, this pacing, this editing, this storytelling overall, with these two phenomenal actors at the centerpiece. And the whole story is this pianist, he failed at, the, at his uh, first attempt at at playing this one piece that is supposed to be unplayable and the grand piano that he's playing currently was the piano of the person that wrote the, the, the piece that he failed at and this is a special tribute to him because he's the only one that can play 90% of his pieces and the 90% that 10% is this one piece that John Cusack is forcing him to play why I'm not gonna say, but this film keeps you intrigued and there's awesome, weird action, weird characters, weird turn of events. And this has one of the, my favorite, ultimate favorite endings that I've seen in a film recently, okay? It plays homage nicely to Pulp Fiction at the very end and I loved it how they did this. So please check this out. This is streaming on Netflix. I didn't get a chance to check if it was on Amazon or any other streaming, but Netflix, it's on there. It's great. Please check this out. It's called Grand Piano, all right? And of course, like always, I wanna show you guys our feature artists for this week. So please stay tuned for them. And we'll be back in a couple for the love and hate segment.
All right, guys, I hope you guys love the, the feature artists. We're back for our second segment of the show, and we're gonna be reviewing, again, John Cusack films. The, the one that I did not like that's currently streaming on Netflix is The Number Station, and it's exactly that. It's The Number Station. He is a secret agent, and he has compassion, and he can't kill a person, so, the company that he works for sends him off to this station in England to, to basically protect the people that are decoding the codes that he was uh, actually being charged with originally. He was being told to kill somebody, so he had to go and kill them. This now, he's going to be the one that's protecting the person that's giving the codes for the other people to kill. So with a weird turn of events and just some weird thing that it, it's like a Mission Impossible wannabe just failed at it. I don't feel the connection between the two characters. It's kind of cliche. It's predictable. It just, 
it, it didn't catch my attention at all. I give this a 2 out of 10. And, um, I mean, Grand Piano, I gave that a 9 out of 10. That, that's how good it was. Um, so yeah, Number Station, currently streaming on Netflix. Um, if you like those type of heist films and all that stuff, then you might like that. I don't. I personally, the only heist films that I like are like uh, Oceans and that type of stuff. Italian Job, I like those. Not this. This was just not good at all. So, one that I did like though, um, The Factory. This was an interesting story and I give this a 6, okay? Um, which isn't saying much, but the story that they had there was phenomenal. And it actually stars um, Dexter's sister and Cusack, of course. It's sort of a wannabe seven. They're both um, detectives trying to solve this case of these, um, these uh, what do you call it, uh, prostitutes that are being kidnapped. And nobody wants to obviously handle a case with prostitutes and, and being kidnapped. They don't give a shit. So they just skip over it. But Cusack takes it upon himself to and then with a weird turn of events he is thrust into the center of this investigation and is forced to solve the investigation quicker than he had expected um it's kind of the, the acting wasn't there it has this uh the girl from uh from parenthood and i just can't stand her she's so annoying she's such a little emo bitch i i just can't stand her acting and she just acts exactly the same as she does in the show. And I can't stand her in the show. She's the worst part of that show. And it's the worst part of this film. And then the, the supporting cast is kind of blah. The only one that actually has any credence at all is Cusack. And there's a couple other supporting characters that are good. But Cusack takes the cake. Dexter's sister sucks as an actress. He's horrible. But the story is there. The story will intrigue you enough to keep your attention. It's just, it, it falls flat sometimes because the acting is so damn bad. The killer is very good. I love his acting in this film. So please check this out. It's called The Factory. And I give this a 6 out of 10. Okay, but please check it out. It's currently streaming on Netflix. So it's easy access. These three films are all streaming on Netflix. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tribute to Cusack and at least as much as I can because I'm only doing the, the films that are currently streaming on Netflix for him. So I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next week on Man Bites Film. And again, my name is Lewis.